rototilling your heart. Man, I believe your heart is already primed and ready for the word of God. I believe that you're hungry for the word of God. I believe you're ready. Come on, say, I'm ready. ready. Look at your neighbor and say, are you ready? ready. Say, because I'm ready. Are you ready? Here we go. This is what it says in Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, looking at verses 15 through 21, it says this. I am the Lord, your holy one. The creator of Israel, your king. So notice this. He's establishing who he is. And then he says, thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and the path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. What are they saying? Is that the army and the power, the chariots and the horses, all of the earthly things, they all will collapse and fall. Why? Because he's the holy one. He's the mighty God. And then it says this. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you know it? Shall you not know it? Another translation says, can't you perceive it? Don't you begin to understand and see? Can't you already sense what it is that God is doing in our midst? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And this imagery that's being communicated is so uh, important to understand because if you've ever gone to Israel, if you've gone to that region, you know that it's, it is a dry place. Water matters. And there's many, many times throughout Scripture that you see how drought has devastated and robbed life from people. And many times when the land was in drought, it was because their spirit was far from God. Here's what I want you to know. If you are sensing a drought in your life, it could be that your spirit has been far from God. But God says this, I am doing such a thing that even in the driest places, I can make a river rush through that place. This is the picture of revival. This is the picture of God doing something that we cannot do in ourselves. And he asked the question, don't you know that? Don't you perceive it? Don't you understand what I am doing? I am doing a new thing in your midst. Goes on and says this, the beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. He even saying all creation is aware of this. In Romans 8, it actually says this, don't you know that all creation is in eager expectation for the sons and daughters of God to be revealed. Now, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a tree hugger. I'm not a climate person. I'm not any of those things, but I will say this. To think that scripture says all creation is aware of what the children of God, what, like, what is in store for the children of God. And they're saying when the children of God get a breakthrough, we get a breakthrough. I want you to think about that. Creation is an expectation. They are anticipating what breakthrough is coming their way. I want us to expect what great, what great breakthroughs come in our way. I mean, you've seen those uh, scenes where, you know, there was maybe a mighty storm that's going to be coming, maybe a tsunami, something that's going on, and guess what? People are sitting on the beach, they're sitting at the resort, they're kind of just doing their own thing, and all the, like, all the wildlife is vacating rapidly, Right? And it seems odd in the moment, but why? Because they sense something massive is coming. I want, us, I want our spirits to sniff out what it is that's coming. I want us to imagine the enemies running away because he knows what's a coming in for him. Lord, I just believe that God's doing some breakthroughs in our life. And so even all creation is aware of this. To give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. We've been in our Holy Spirit series for a while, and this has kind of taken a unique chapter as we talk about revival. You cannot have revival without the Holy Spirit. The reason why the Holy Spirit has come is so that we would be revived once again. 
And so here's the big idea I want us to think about today. Revival is here now. Do you not see it? Revival is here now. Do you not see it? Revival is here now. Do you not see it? An awakening is happening right now. Can't you sense it? There is something new and fresh that's happening. Don't you sense that going on in your life? This is not me just trying to motivate you. This is something that is a spiritual principle. God is doing a work. However, we mainly, we like to focus on the desert. We like to focus on the drought. We like to focus on the lack. We like to focus what is not. And God says, I don't want you to focus on what is not and what is the drought and what is the desert. I want you to know that what you see is not everything that's happening. There is something greater happening than what we can see. And it takes our spirit of faith to say, ooh, I smell rain coming. (laughs) You know, I mean, here in Washington, you know when the rain's coming. Regardless of what the weather forecast people say, you just have to step outside and go, rain's coming. And back in February, we proclaimed this. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. That, that, wasn't just, that wasn't just a feel good. That's a pro, that is a prophetic word for us today. And either you're going to grab on, but you're going to let the word of the Lord go into your spirit, or you're going to let the word of the Lord hit the ground. And you will reap the fruit of what you choose to do with that word. You'll either let that word, that seed, hit your spirit and go, okay, fruit, new fruit is growing in my life. Or you're going to let it hit the ground, and you're going to continue to be in the desert. So proclaiming this over us, revival is here now. Do you not see it? More than preaching it, I'm announcing it. I don't want to talk about it. I want to live it. I don't want to watch it happen. I want to be part of it. I'm not worried about what things look like right now. I will not be fooled by what I see, but I will see Jesus do a new work who is faithful and just to those who call on his name. That's what he does. So today I want us to look at this, and John chapter 4 is a portion of scripture we looked at last week. I said we're going to be in in a few weeks. This few weeks is turning into more than a few weeks, and that's okay. John 4 speaks about an encounter that Jesus has with a woman of reputation at a well in Samaria. Now that in itself should bring some red flags if you understand Uh, kind of the the, the biblical culture of what's going on. Jews do not associate with Samaritans. If anything, they try to avoid the Samaritans, so much so that they made another route going around Samaria as they go from Judea to Galilee. But Jesus said he had to go through there. Why? Because there was a divine appointment. I want us to know that we, the Northwest is not to be avoided. There's a divine appointment happening in the Northwest. And he met a woman of reputation at the well in the sixth hour in the afternoon. This was, this was because she was an outcast of the rest of her community. When everyone else would get up in the morning in the cool of the day and gather their pots and they would go and they would have, you know, interaction. They'd have some girl time and they'd draw water from the well. She wasn't a part of that. She was a castaway. So she went in the afternoon and while she was there, Jesus saw her and said, woman, can you give me something to drink? And she was astonished. And she said, how can you, being a Jew, ask me, a woman, to give you something to drink? And he says, if you would have known who asked you to give something to drink, you would have asked me, and I would have given you something to drink. And she says, you have nothing to draw from. You have no container. You have nothing. How are you going to be able to give me something to drink? And he says, woman, the thing that I can give to you would quench your thirst so much that if you drank of the water that I gave to you, you would never thirst again. And she said, I want some of that. Turn to your neighbor and say, I want some of that. And so this begins this unfolding of this unique understanding to this woman She was having revival. She was having a moment where her eyes were being opened to what she never understood. And that could only happen not through doctrine, not through debate, not through a political system, not by another marriage, 
not by uh, anything external. The only way that that revival began to happen for her was she had an encounter with Jesus. So here's what I want you to know. Point number one, revival is having an encounter with the presence and power of God. Revival is having an encounter with the power and the presence of God. The verse that I want us to look at from this is in John chapter 4, verses 13 through 15, and this is what it says. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will what? Will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will come in him a fountain of water springing up into what? Everlasting life. And the woman said, sir, give me some of that that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. What is she saying? She's saying, I'm tired. I'm wore out. I can't keep doing this. I'm doing the best I can just to go from day to day, situation to situation, moment to moment. And if you're telling me that I can be free from all of that, please give me some of what you've got. Some of you today have drank long from the well of religion, but you've never drank from the personal encounter and presence of the power of God. What's going to change your life is not religion. It's an encounter with the power and presence of God. Please do not confuse religion and the power and presence of God. Right now in this room, you have people that are sensing religion and you have people that are sensing the power and presence of God. The presence of God is here. How do we know the presence of God is here? Because we proclaimed his word. We filled this place with praise. God inhabits the praises of his people. Where his word is proclaimed, he manifests himself. When our hearts are open to receive it, it goes from just a head thing to a heart thing. You can sense it happening within you. You can't sense that when you come in weighed down, burdensome, judgmental, negative, proud, um, indulging in self because you cannot serve. You cannot indulge at the table of self and the table of sacrifice at the same time. And today, I, I'm here to say that when it comes to what God wants to do in your life, it must first begin with an encounter with him. How do you have an encounter with him? Is it a, a combination of the right songs and the right lighting and the right temperature and the right people and the right preacher? No, 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 no. It comes with a hungry heart. If you ain't hungry, he's not going to feed you. If you're not willing to push aside the things of convenience, comfort, routine, control, if you're not willing to forfeit all that you know and all your securities and all your rewards and all your idols and all the things that you've acquired, if you're not willing to lay that all down for something that will truly satisfy, you will not have an encounter with God. One of the things that we had over the last few weeks and, and it's kind of a deceiving title. The title is, We Had Revival Services. And the reason why it's a deceiving title is because it's saying, oh, those services were revival. No, revival services was a prophetic statement. We're having gatherings where people can be revived. And this is what happened. People experienced the power and presence of God so much so that they said, I can't just do one night, I want another night. I'm gonna come back for more. Now listen, listen, I, I'm telling you, on a weekend, the weekend environment, the weekend atmosphere, the weekend mentality, the weekend attitude is very different than those revival services. Here's why, because um, it wasn't just because it started at night. It started at seven o'clock, okay? We had people lining up at 5.30. 
And some of that was not good weather. People were outside in the rain at 530. They were expressing, I want what's going to be poured out. So let's just, just, just take this for a moment. Okay. Some of you are like, well, the reason why they got there so early is because, you know, seats were going to get taken up. Okay, okay. That might have been the logistic thing, but let's just get into the attitude hunger thing. Like when your alarm went off, then you're like, oh, I got time. I'm not, I'm not trying to like scrutinize you for hitting snooze, but what was the attitude within when you woke up today? Was it, whew. I can't wait to get to the house of the Lord. What is God going to do today? Woohoo! <laughs> right? Like there's something within like, I can't wait. I, I heard somebody say this, and this wasn't even during the, the, the 10 days of our revival service. This was even before that. And they, they said this, and, and it, it's so subtle but it's an indicator that there are streams coming through the desert. They made the statement. You know, every week, I can't wait till Sunday comes. What are they saying? God's changing my life here. Now, we've, many amens came because you, you understand that. Like, yeah, I remember saying that. But are you still saying that? Is there still that passion within of God? You're not done yet. He who began a good work will complete a good work. And he'll complete it based on really my hunger for him. So this, this thought about Revival is having an encounter with the presence and power of God. It is not religion. It's not perfect attendance. But listen, when there's revival, you don't want to miss out. When God is doing something, it's not like you go, I'll just catch it later. I've heard people say, mm, like almost use cuss words. Mm, I missed it because of work or something that was happening during those 10 days. They're like, man, I missed it. And there was something within that, and what they're expressing is, I don't want to miss out on what God wants to do in my life. Today, I want to soak the fire of, you don't want to miss out on what God's going to do in your life. I want, I want to fan the flame that says, some of you have already experienced so much of what God can do, it's time for you to say, God, what do you want to do now through my life? Because at some point, you got to stop just like, ooh, this is good. <laughs> and you got to get in the kitchen, and you got to start preparing something so that other people can taste and see that the Lord is good. So revival is having an encounter with the presence and power of God. Second thought is this. Revival is having such an encounter with Jesus that you are forever ever changed. The emphasis on this is forever changed. I'm not talking, oh, that was, that was kind of neat. That was fun. Oh, I didn't expect that. And then revert back to your old ways. Revival is it having such an encounter with the presence and power of God that it marks a whole new journey for your life. Now, I will say the people that I feel like are the most difficult to get this are people that have attended church for the majority of their life. That's why it's called, what, revival. Because you were once vived, you once experienced it, but there's a part of it that died, or a part of it that grew cold, it, it kind of became stagnant. And then all of a sudden, we once again get breathed upon by the wind of God. Everybody say spirit. spirit. The word spirit literally means breath or wind. 
So when the Spirit of God blows across those embers that are covered by dead things, dry things, difficult things, and the Spirit of God breathes a new life, even those things that are on top of it get consumed by the new breath of God. We are forever changed. The things that we once valued no longer become that value. The things that we used to value that died out become once again the highest priority. Anything that is of God, anything that's close to the heart of God, it becomes our greatest pursuit, our greatest passion. But when you have religion, it's not a pursuit, it's not a passion, it's, it's kind of an, it's a, it's a, when it's convenient. When I can make time for it. And there's something about those 10 days that we had. And please hear, I'm, I'm kind of just using those 10 days as a comparison. 10 days is a comparison of what I was willing to break when it came to my routine. What I was willing to break when it came to my, my priorities. What, it, what I was willing to break away from when it came to, to schedule. And when I allowed myself to get in an environment where there was an anticipation, there was a hunger, where praise broke through the ceiling, where a hunger for the word of God became palpable, when faith would rise in me, something different was birthed from me. Some of you know because you, you experienced that. Others, maybe you didn't have a chance to. But I want you to know that we don't have revival because we had 10 days of service. We have revival because our heart is hungry for an encounter with God. And that is such a powerful thing that allows me to be forever changed. Forever changed. Please hear this. You don't have to walk in that fear anymore. You don't need to walk with that depression anymore. You don't need to be swallowed up by the sorrow and the pain of life anymore. You can break free from that in the name of Jesus because in his presence is fullness of joy. But it's not his presence in a place and in a building and in just a, an hour or an hour and a half window of church time. It is his presence abiding, very real within you. How do you know when his presence is abiding real in you? Because you hunger to hear him more. You hunger to know him more. And where do you get that? From the word of God. Please hear this. You will not have revival pushing away from his word. Revival brings a hunger. Please give me more of this water so I will never look out here again. It will. Jesus said it will come from within. How do you know when you're in revival? Because the way you think and the way you talk, the way you move, what you, what you make decisions on comes from the word that you hid in your heart that you would not sin against him. His word that was your spiritual manna. His word that gives you nourishment, that gives you strength. His word that is, as we heard even during those 10 days, that healing that is the children's bread is right here. It satisfies. How do you know when you're in revival? Because you hunger for the presence of God and the presence of God forever changes you. If you can walk out of here today, think the same, have the same stinking thinking and attitudes, revival is far from you. Revival is near you when you go, I don't want that anymore, I want more of this. Sir, give me some more of that. I was in, I was in a couple musicals growing up, one of them was in Oliver Twist. Please sir, can I have some more? Where's our spiritual hunger for more, more, more? 
I, I'm waiting for people to say, Pastor, I couldn't wait for you. And so I started reading more in John chapter 4. I couldn't wait for you. So I, I did my, some of my own study on the Holy Spirit. Pastor, I couldn't wait for you. I had to go tell my neighbor about Jesus. I couldn't wait for you to get a program together. I couldn't wait for you to make time for me. I couldn't wait for you to go to the hospital. I couldn't wait for you to do this. I had to give what I have got. If you're waiting on me, you ain't going to have revival. But when you pursue him, when you get hungry for him, imagine what God will do, can do. It says in the, under this point of revival is having such an encounter with Jesus that you are forever changed. I want you to see verse, verses 25 and 26. It says, the woman said to him, because he revealed that I'm the Messiah. Uh, she says, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Verse 28, it says, the woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, come see a man who told me all the things I ever did. Could this be the Christ? And they went out to the city and came to him. This woman who was a woman of reputation, a woman who, uh, you know, was not living right, and everyone knew it, she encountered Jesus, and it says that she left her water pots. The water pots represents everything in her life that she has been trying to acquire herself. None of those things mattered to her anymore. She left her water pots, went into the city where she looked a fool, I'm sure, can you imagine this woman, this woman who was married five times, living with another man, a woman of reputation, probably ruined some of those marriages that were there in the city, and she comes running in, you guys, listen, come out here, I got something to tell you, and they come out, what is it now, and they're drying their hands, or doing dishes, or where it may be, it's like, you got, you got to meet a man that has told me everything about me, and I'm sure they're thinking, yeah, I'm sure he was a man, and I'm sure that he found out more about you than we want to know. But she didn't care. She didn't care. She was so excited about this person named Jesus. Listen, this person who initially, she goes, what are you trying to talk? Like, how can you talk to me? You and I aren't even supposed to be talking. And now she's like so excited of who this Jesus is that she runs back into her hometown and says, you've got to meet the man who is doing a work in my life right now. Question. Are you running and telling your coworkers, your classmates, your family what God's doing in your life? Like, I'm not a Facebooker. I, I don't really don't have a lot of social media. I know social media has a lot of ugly things about it. But all the time that the enemy has used those fingers to vomit ugly stuff, why not redeeming those fingers to proclaim what it is that Jesus is doing in your life? Because it's really safe to say things just through your fingers, right? But what about telling somebody face to face? What about proclaiming, like redeeming every venue of communication and interaction? Are you telling people about Jesus? Are you telling people about Jesus? We do not have revival if we don't people tell people about Jesus. Revival is happening when we tell people about Jesus. What's made a difference in your life? Can I tell you, that is a wide open invitation to tell somebody about Jesus. You, you look different. What's going on with you? Let me tell you about Jesus. How come you're not reacting when our boss told us this? Because let me tell you about Jesus. How come you're not mad when our school is doing this? Let me tell you about Jesus. How come you're not upset when your kid who's playing sports isn't starting? Because let me tell you about Jesus. Do you hear me? Everything is an open door to tell people about Jesus. 
Everything is an opportunity to tell people about Jesus. And it's really easy to see it when you see it. But if we're not looking for those things, it just becomes kind of my own little private thing. Listen, the enemy wants to keep revival back by keeping it inward. As long as you're messing with you, that's good. But don't, don't let what God's doing in you bleed out to other people. The enemy doesn't want you telling other people about what Jesus is doing. Let's talk about what Jesus is doing. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what Jesus is doing. I'm excited for people that got physically healed. I'm excited for people that found joy again. I'm excited for people who broke off from sorrow and shame and regret and insecurity. I'm excited for the joy that's rising up in this house. I'm excited for the people that are hungry for the word of God. I'm excited for the marriages that are being transformed. I'm excited for another generation, our junior high, senior high, our young adults, our kids, our faith kids that are seeing the demonstration of the power of God. I'm excited for turning the tide in this region. It's happening, church. Don't despise those days of small beginnings. It's starting somewhere. It's starting in here. God is doing a new thing. It says, so she left those water pots. What do you need to leave today? What do you need to leave today that's keeping you from walking in the newness of life. What sorrows, what, what disappointments, the things that people said, the expectations you had that got missed and, and it left you confused or stunned. I, I know in this room, we all can have a story of things that went wrong and we were victim of, or that we, if we could do it over again, we would, but we can't go back and now it weighs on us. All of these things are very true and I'm not trying to minimize any of them, but I want to make sure I'm maximizing this, that there is nothing that's impossible with Jesus. Nothing that's impossible with Jesus. And if you have a hunger to say, I want more of what Jesus can do in my life than more of what I'm trying to gather in my own broken pots. I want more of what will truly satisfy rather than more of all the clutter, the junk, the busyness, the, the obligations, the expectations, the juggling of things. I want all of that that has caused me anxiety and pain and hurt and sorrow and rejection. Everything the enemy has used to leverage to keep me where I'm at. I'm ready to walk away from those things so that I can experience the refreshing of what God can only do in my life. I need revival and I need to be forever changed. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Some of you have already tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Some of you are already walking in that. And that's great, but I know that there's others that aren't. Trust me, these are only two out of like five or six points that I got. But I know that this is the place that I need to stop at today. Some of you, you have been carrying your water pots to your hole way too long. It's time to leave those water pots and be forever changed. It's time for you to leave this place and say, I need to tell people what Jesus is doing, is doing, not just has done, is doing. Currently, in fresh, real time, this is what Jesus is doing. He is making a way in the desert. He is pouring down rain. He is showing himself faithful. He is my king. He is my Lord. He is my everything. He is my first and he is my last. He's not just my, 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 my when it's convenience or when it's opportunity. No, he is my everything. Some of you need that today because you've done church way too long. You've done religion way too long. You've done it in your own strength way too long. And he says this, come to me all that are burdened and weary 
and I will give you rest. He says, rest for your soul. Rest for your soul. Listen to that. Rest for your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. He will give you rest. Like, imagine a mind that is at rest, not running to what ifs and oh no's and how can I? A mind that's at rest. Emotions that aren't being swayed here and there, but emotions that are steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Lord, you're my peace, you're my joy, you're my strength. Your will, your will that you want to do things, will of how you want things done, and you can surrender that and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Imagine what that life could be. Today, you need that. You need revival to hit your heart today. You need an encounter with Jesus. I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm not asking you to get more religious. I'm asking you to lay down all that you know and lean in to the one who already knows all about you and will give you something that nothing else can satisfy, something that flows from within his spirit. So today, on this Mother's Day, you would say, I need that. I need to encounter the presence of God, the power of God, and I want to be forever changed. I want to be forever changed. I want to walk out of here different than how I walked in. Today, if that's you, I'm going to ask you to do this. Right here, right now, no delay. Right here, right now, with courage, with determination, with boldness, with a new spirit that says, I need that, I want that. And some of you, you've been a part of this church for a long time. You know you need to answer this, but you're thinking, well, I've been here for so long, what are people gonna think? They're gonna think, good, good, God, keep doing a good work in them. That's what they're gonna think. The enemy wants you to be so consumed about what other people think. Don't keep thinking about what other people think. Think about what he wants. Think about what he's doing in your life. Celebrate that, pursue that. Who cares about your name? You're not living for your name anyways. You're living for his name. So today, that's what you need. That's what you want. And, and, and then I, I need to say this before, before we do the altar call. I know that there are people in here that are so hungry for God that you responded, you've responded the last four weeks in a row. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful for that hungry heart. But please hear this. From last week to this week, it's not that you lost your salvation. It's just that maybe you felt like, man, it's just been harder than I thought. It doesn't mean you lost anything. It's just your understanding. God is doing a new thing, and I'm still getting in his word. I'm, I'm getting up, and I'm keep running. You don't need to get saved again. You just need to remind yourself, I am who I am in Christ, okay? So I, I say that because I, I don't want just, I'm not looking just for numbers, I'm looking for the people to respond who understand. I am dry, I am desolate, and I need something to come through this dry valley. I need to be forever changed, forever changed. If that's you, don't delay. Don't worry about anybody else. On the count of three, decisively and quickly. Not for me, not for the person on your left and right, but for you and God. I want you to stand and I want you to respond. and said, that's me. I'm hungry for God. I want to encounter the presence of God and I want to be forever changed. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to stand up and come up here. And right now, you know that's you and the enemy's saying, don't do it. Do it. Don't listen to him. That is the last lie he's going to tell you that you're gonna heed to. Stop heeding to his lies in the name of Jesus. If that's you, then you need to respond on the count of three, stand up and come up here in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. If that's you, come up here and respond to what Jesus is doing in your life. Come up here, come up here, come right up here, come right up here, come right up here, come on up here, come on up here. Look, this is not games. This is not just cute stuff. This is, this is breaking the back of the enemy's stuff right here. 
This is forever changing stuff. This is removing shame and regret and doubt and anxiety. It's, it's changing like, like lineage is what is happening right here. And this is far more than just, oh, just a handful of people. No, this is, this is generation upon generation upon generation. So those that responded, thank you for doing that. And just right now, just begin holding up your hands and just, just talk to the Lord. But anyone else, anyone else that needs to respond today, I don't want to, I don't want to belabor this, but I, I don't want to close the door if there's someone else that needs to walk through this. If that's you, come up here. Just wait just a second longer. Church, I'm going to have you stand if you don't mind. I want to have our prayer team make their way up here. Anybody that's on the prayer team, and I'm going to have you go ahead and get in front of them if you can. And I want us, I want us to pray with them. And please, prayer, prayer team, please, please hear this. First, ask them, what is it they're responding to? Maybe it's a rededication in their life, and that's great. But maybe they're carrying anxiety or addiction or whatever it may be, and let's break that off in the name of Jesus. Pray by the Spirit of God on this, right? Church, would you just extend your hand out? over them as we pray. Prayer ministry team, I want you to go. I want you to go. I want you to talk with them. I want you to minister to them right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for breaking the back of the enemy right here, right now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that this truly is an altar, that this is a place of turnaround. This is a place of change. And that when they get done today, Lord God, they are walking out of here different in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now that every addiction falls in the name of Jesus. All pain and sorrow breaks in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that joy is being deposited upon them right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we declare that every lie the enemy has spoken over them, we break the back of the liar in the name of Jesus. You have no more authority. You have no more access into their life because they are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Father, I thank you right now for a perfect work that you're doing, a complete work that you're doing in them in the name of Jesus. Father, today I pray that we as the people, your church that have gathered today, that we would just not be spectators, but Father, we would be carriers carriers of your word, carriers of your anointing, carriers of your power. Look at as we go to our homes, as we go to our schools, as we go to our neighborhoods, Lord God, do the work that you want to do in us. You're not sending angels. You're not sending a spiritual army that we can't see with our own eyes. You're sending the church. You're sending me. So Father, I thank you for that. We will not shrink back in fear but we will step up in courage and in boldness in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for renewing in us a first love once again. Thank you, Lord God, for reviving our hearts. Lord God, only you can and do satisfy in the name of Jesus. So Father, as we call on your name and as we look to you, Lord God, we know that you are faithful and you do not disappoint. Father, I thank you for this day. This is the Lord's day. This is a good day. This is a day of celebration. This is the day of rejoicing. This is the day of salvation in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the church say amen. Amen, amen. Our, we're just going to continue in worship. If you want to pray, if you want to be here in this atmosphere, please feel free to do so. If you need to head out, you're more than welcome to, but I'm asking you, if any conversation, do it out in the lobby as you're getting your, your photo taken with mom or whoever it may be, but this is gonna be an, an altar right now, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. You guys are dismissed.